everybody, this is Jennifer. Welcome to my channel. Uh, today, I am going to show you some cool stuff I got in the mail. And if you want to hear about it, I will tell you about my COVID test. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I went yesterday to a lab center and yeah, I had a COVID test done. Um, it turned out okay. Um, better than I thought it would, but if you've never had one done, so you go in there and you have to have a mask on. And you pull the mask down just like under your nose and you lean your head back. And this person sticks this, it looks like, looks like a little wire with a pipe cleaner attached. And it goes up your nose, like way up. and. Luckily, it lasts only like 10 seconds on each side, but when you go in, you're not quite sure and then you realize what's happening and then it's like on to the next one and it's not nearly as nice the first time because you as the first time because you know what's happening. But turned out okay. It's 30 seconds out of my life. Now it's over. The sooner we have a vaccine for that thing, the better, so I don't have to go through that very often. Anyhow, yeah, it burns. I was like, I was prepared to feel like full, like having a stuffy nose, but that's not, that is not what it's like. The thing's too thin for that. Uh, so I got some books in the mail. Thought I'd tell you about those, but, at, but first, I wanted to tell you something else I got in the mail. So, um, I know that there's a lot of live streams going on during, uh, during this quarantine stay at home period. And every Tuesday at seven Eastern, six central, Hayes Carl goes on. Um, I look at it through, uh, Facebook, but I think he's moved on to, uh, moved into other platforms as well. And so, I've been watching that for like, it's an hour and a half to two hours, basically a live show every night. And it's totally free, but he, you know, they have, the art, a lot of artists have tip jars, so if you're doing live stuff, you're not obliged to by any means, but you, you can, and the option is there. And I, I am one of those, I, I am one of these uh, poor benighted souls who still actually thinks it's a good idea to pay for your music so <laughs> whenever I see a live show I I put in some money because normally you have to go out for that you pay the ticket you pay for parking and all that good stuff and drinks god forbid so I kick in a little at you know whenever I whenever he performs for like two hours every week so uh, the other day I was in getting the mail and I get this it's postcard from Hayes Carl with a thank you. And that's really neat because you never get mail like that anymore. You never get like handwritten stuff from somebody who's not trying to sell you something or trying to get money from you. So I thought that was pretty cool. And the Tuesday shows that are live are just really good. I don't miss one. And speaking of Another artist who's doing live stuff for um, for the stay at home time is Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds uh, on their Facebook not not on their Facebook on their YouTube channel they've got live stream going twenty four seven and that is also that that is also something I really like to watch um, that's not like he's not live twenty four seven it's more like a constant stream of old performance videos, uh, video, uh, um, you know, full-on music videos, um, and stuff like that. But this is a segue because one of the books I got in the mail is "And the Ass Saw the Angel" by Nick Cave, same dude. Um, and this, I, I I ordered it because I thought I might take play, uh, take part in maybe Midrash. This is a biblical reference, and it takes part, uh, and this takes place in the South, and it follows a mute 
outcast from this uh, very religious southern city, and it's Southern Gothic by an Australian rock star. <laughs> anyway. But this is my first time reading Nick Cave's, uh, like, writing. I have, uh, you know, I've consumed his music for a good 15 years now. Um, and so I'm interested to see how I get along with this. Um, and this is Christmas at Cold Comfort Farm by Stella Gibbons. Um, I haven't read the regular Cold Comfort Farm yet, so it, this will give me incentive to do so before Christmas, because this is what because I want to read this at Christmas. I think this is along the lines of some short stories, or maybe like some vignettes. Because it says the stories that appear this by, appear by courtesy of the editors of the lady. Okay, I think these are like short stories and stuff. Some of which take place at Cold Comfort Farm that are aggregated in this little in, in this little book. It's not that little. It's almost three hundred pages. But yeah, Christmas at Cold Comfort Farm by Stella Gibbons. Uh, and those are the only uh, fictions. The rest are nonfiction. This one is Food Rules by Michael Pollan, except this has illustrations by Myra Coleman. And I started reading stuff by her this year, and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I liked this book the first time I read it, and when I realized there was an illustrated version with Myra Coleman and really nice illustrations that I like, I knew I needed this, so now I have it. Uh, next up are a couple of physics books. Um, they're both by Brian Cox and Jeff Forshaw. I don't know who Jeff Forshaw is. I've never read anything by him before, but I am aware of Brian Cox. He is on the BBC. Um, he did the TV show, oh goodness, what is the TV show's name? Oh. Seven Wonders of the Solar System, How the Universe Works. He, he, he narrates all of those. And he is also a part of a podcast called The Infinite Monkey Cage that's on BBC Podcasts with uh, the comedian Robin Entz. And they have uh, guest stars who are often comedians too, where they discuss various scientific and scientific adjacent things. Um, I really like it. I don't listen to podcasts very often anymore but occasionally I will listen to one of those. Um, so what I got was, I start with this one. No, you know what, let me start with this one. Uh, the Quantum Universe uh, and Why Anything That Can Happen Does. Well, of course, obligatory cat on the cover. No, okay, so this is about the quantum universe and everything that is really, 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 really nearly impossibly small. And so I am looking forward to reading this. And the second book I got from them is, okay, another cat. I, I'm sensing a theme here. Um, why does E equals M? Why does E equal M C squared? Which is about Einstein's theory of relativity. Uh, I have a passing, like, vague knowledge of these. I can kind of talk about the uncertainty principle and stuff like that, um, but you can never know enough. And I like reading about science, so I'm glad I got those. Next up is Under the Blick Big Black Sun, A Personal History of L.A. Punk by John Doe. Um, it's also got writing from Tom DeSavia and other people. Um, there's a foreword by Billy Joe Armstrong from Green Day. Um, I know it also has Jane Wyde Wideland from the Go-Go's and Henry Rollins writing in here along with I think Exe and Servina. Uh, John Doe's bandmate in X is also in here. Um, I don't know a lot about the LA punk scene. Um, I was born after punk was a thing. And when I was younger, um, I listened to the same stuff my parents listened to, and I didn't get into my own 
in, into my own musical tastes until later, and then it was alternative time, and uh, and then I went into my heavy metal period. Um, so I don't know a lot about punk. I know some things that I like and some things that are fine. Um, but I would like to know more about the musical history surrounding it. And so I picked this up when I found it. Uh, next up is another period that I totally missed. Um, this is Recollections of My Life as a Woman by Diana DePrima, and she was one of the main female figures in the beat movement. And this is a memoir covering her time in New York. Um, I believe it's, let's see, it's the early 50s. Yeah, this is about in her first 30 years, I, I do believe, based on the description. And I feel like the Beats are also a, a movement that completely passed me by from a taste perspective. Um, I've tried to read On the Road more times than I am comfortable admitting, and I just cannot do it. However, I have never tried any of Di Diana DePrima's Diane DePrima stuff and I'm going to give her a shot too and I thought this was even if I don't end up liking her work I think her life in this period of time will at the very least be interesting so I'm looking forward to reading that next up are two my last two things are art related this is the Guardians uh, the Guardian of Mercy by Terrence Ward um, this and the subtitle here is how an extraordinary painting by Caravaggio changed an ordinary life today and basically I think this this has like twin narratives uh, one in the past and then one currently uh, regarding Caravaggio's life when he was making this painting and it is called yeah so uh, the seven acts of mercy is an altarpiece that's in a small um, church in Naples and it was painted by Caravaggio during I think it was a tumultuous time in his life and this is part his story and part the story of I think it might be the author and then the guardian who keeps an eye on the painting um I'll be honest I flipped through the inside a bit and I don't know that it matches up exactly with what's on the um description on the back but once I finish reading it, I'll, you know, I'll be able to say more. But it's got a very nice cover. With a very interesting painting on it. I do think, are there, I do believe, yeah, the paper in here is the, um, is the, is the very, it's, it's the type that you kind of get in textbooks. And it's got color color photos in it so it'll be interesting I think it shows like I'm hoping these pictures show the parts they're talking about that would be really helpful but there's that and then my my last but not least this art book here well this this piece of nonfiction about art is in Montparnasse uh, the Emergence of Surrealism in Paris from Duchamp de Dali, and it is by Sue Rowe. I'm quite interested in this period of art history. Um, I live less than two hours away from the Dali Museum that's in St. Petersburg, Florida, and so I try to go there a couple of times a year, and I really enjoy Dali's work. I am not as familiar with other surrealists, um, and I'm really interested in knowing more about the movement. So I'm really glad I got this. It, if I like this, there's more that she's done. She's done Montmartre, which I think is about Impressionism. And I've already read a good book about that. So I wanted to try this next, but... If I like it, I might read more about it. And this also has very nice pictures in the insets. See, 
Golly, I've seen that one. And during one special thing, I got to see the Aphrodisiac Jacket, which is the name of a song by The Cult, by the way, on their 1986, I think. The 86 is the album, Elect when the uh, album Electric came out. And I, I, in case you don't know, The Cult is my absolute favorite band of all time. So when I finally got to see that, I was like, yeah. All right, so that's me talking about not much of anything. Uh, I hope everybody is having a good weekend. Um, yeah. Let me know what you're reading, if anything cool has happened. Let me know if you've had to have one of those COVID tests. Um, I heard some like pretty gnarly things from people I know who have had it. And so I was like freaking out. I was almost nauseous. I was so freaked out about it. But in the end, it turned out okay for me. But I re it was really not pleasant. And I hope I don't have to do it again. <laughs> anyway, that is all. Have a nice weekend, everybody. Good reading. Bye.